All right. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Danso Pitch Podcast. I am your host, Charles Danso. Welcome again, Daniel. Daniel, it's been a while since we last saw each other, huh? Yeah, it's been a minute, man. <laughs> uh, for real. It's, it's been crazy, guys. Honestly, for those listening, we've just been dealing with a lot of personal stuff. I mean, between our, our careers, our personal lives, everything else. But, you know, with that, that definitely can't stop us from giving you guys some valuable content. So, I'm glad, Daniel, that you were able to join me today. Um, you know, we have a lot of great conversations that we want to kind of highlight centered around today's topic, which is relationship building. That's going to be what we're going to be discussing for today for those watching and or tuning in from Spotify, Apple Podcasts, that's Dan So Pitch. Make sure you guys subscribe to today's episode. So kind of getting right into it, Daniel, one thing I want to kind of start and highlight is what exactly is relationship building for the audience? Now, for the audience that may be listening and or watching this, relationship building is a ver- can be various things. That can be through mentorship. When you build relationships, that means, example, like you're conversing with someone, trying to understand something of the individual or maybe get something out of the individual. That could be information. That can be if you're looking for a job for those in, in, our, in the workforce, looking for a job, maybe interacting with someone that could put you in the right position. Maybe you're looking to start a business and you want to speak to another entrepreneur or someone that has a business already in place. All these are clear examples of what relationship building is. But Daniel, just to kind of touch upon uh, what we kind of were discussing off mic was a question that you kind of brought up is, how can someone actually build relationships during this era that we're in this is kind of the pandemic kind of i guess now we're going into the post back to pre-pandemic stage yeah, whatever what, it is yeah right the roller coaster we're in with this right <laughs> exactly how how for the audience the question that i have for you daniel that maybe you can share with us is how can the audience interact during this pandemic period that we're in where we're not necessarily always in contact directly with individuals you know, in in a face-to-face kind of setting, how can someone actually build relationships during this era? Your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's a challenge when, especially when, if you're trying to, you know, do a lot of in-person, client-facing interactions, you know, tactile contact, just, you know, really uh, building relationships in person, it's very difficult right now. I mean, it could happen because of where we're at with the um you know post pandemic era wherever wherever we stand with that but still you know it's still out there and i think the best way still you know as of right now is to really try to leverage the virtual settings that are in place and i'm not just talking like you know the zoom calls that might be on you know whatever company you're with that does like maybe zoom calls or you know google hangouts or you know just even online like social media like you know maybe a couple of facebook groups that are uh, that you know they're all over the place you know I'm not, like i'm not just limiting it to that i'm talking actual like virtual events like eventbrite um you know, different networking functions. There's just a lot, there's like, um, there's like a black tech uh, a virtual uh, conference that they have, you know, every quarter. So I'm talking like those events. And some of them, yes, they may require a little bit of investment. And you may think, well, why would I pay to go to a, a virtual conference? And it's a great question because, you know, it's like, well, I'm not really meeting the person. I'm not really like getting their business cards or like getting that in-person connection that would be worth the investment, you know, flying out somewhere or whatever the case is. But when you really look at it, I mean, outside of it still being COVID, the opportunity to kind of leverage that virtual environment to your advantage is more opportune now than I would say when it was there uh, pre-COVID, because now it's we're in the environment and the climate where we really don't have a choice but to use the virtual setting to network. Uh, because you know the fact of the matter is that 
you know, there, there is a lot of health and safety concerns with being in physical contact. Yes, we're in a better place than where we were two years ago, but there's still concern, right? And the fact that virtual environments are still being kind of the crux of a lot of business today doesn't mean it's going to go away just because of, you know, just because society and, and you know, the world is moving in a better direction, um, you know, COVID wise. So right. I think that leveraging a lot of these network events that are happening and, you know, there's a lot of free ones out there too, but using that is really the best way because, you know, social media can get you far. Instagram, LinkedIn is a great resource as well. Mm -hmm. And um, Facebook, as I mentioned before, with the different groups. But I think really where it's it's going to be advantageous is actually getting to those settings where it's a focus and directed uh, event, you know, and that can be a networking event. Um, let's say if you're trying to get into tech, <clears throat> going to a tech event that is virtual, where there's opportunity for you to know the people, get to know who the right contacts are, and also get your name out there, right? Um, because virtually, there's a lot of that advantages to making yourself known, especially in a space where uh, right now it's, you know, we all have to kind of be online. We all have to have that uh, presence, but, you know, nobody really sees our faces. So it's also important, right? getting to the virtual setting and getting your face known and, and people seeing you. So I think to answer your question, Charles, and for the audience, you know, mm -hmm. my personal, you know, vision for that is, you know, focused uh, networking events is like the best way right now, you know, getting out there, um, getting out there while staying in here, as I would say, right? right? Like you're sitting at home, you're sitting at your, your work desk or whatever the case is, get on the internet, look for whatever virtual networking events are out there because you can do it in the comfort of your own home. Right. And yeah, I it's think, readily available. I think, uh, Daniel, you, you kind of made some great points. And, you know, for the audience that's also listening, I believe Daniel definitely highlighted a few key ones I would definitely recommend is, like he mentioned, utilizing virtual conferences and or meetups, as they call it. The reason being is because with these conferences now, especially doing it from the comfort of your own home, you don't have to necessarily spend money to travel. You don't have to book a hotel. You're doing this literally just getting up, uh, you know, from your bed or whatever the case is. Maybe obviously you want to clean up a little bit. You want to look somewhat presentable on these conferences. So, but the point is you're doing it from the comfort of your home. So there really is no excuse. And also the benefit of that is, is because a lot of companies whether in the startup phase and or more established companies have actually adapted to this. For those that are listening and or watching this, with a lot of interviews that you go on now, what are they done through? Other Zoom, other Google, uh, Google meetups, anything of that nature, Microsoft Teams, all these things are kind of what the world is kind of moving towards, as Daniel mentioned. So it's very important to leverage the resources of the virtual realm. That is, of course, understanding more of the social media space and how to connect through the social media space. So he mentioned LinkedIn. Just, just don't go on LinkedIn to go on LinkedIn just to update your personal information. That's great. But you also want to connect with other individuals on there. If you see someone that's a mutual friend, like I, me and Daniel were talking off mic, I was telling Daniel, I was like, hey, if I see that Daniel has a friend, a, uh, John Doe, the, the friend is whatever, John Doe, and he's has a he's working at Microsoft, maybe I may not necessarily know this individual, but I can reach out to Daniel because I know Daniel and be like, hey, this person I know is working at Microsoft that you're mutual friends with. I'm interested in working in this company. Here's my resume. If you're interested, could you pass this along to this person? Maybe he or she may not necessarily know the specific role, but he, he or she may be able to connect you to the right team, the right manager to kind of help with this, with this uh, situation that whatever you're trying to handle or kind of get into. I, I'll use a personal example. I currently work for JP Morgan. I had a friend of mine reach out to me. He was interested in a job specifically, and he knew that I worked for the company. So he reached out to me, he said, hey, Charles, I'm looking for this job. Do you know who the hiring manager or and or the manager is? You know what I did? I just went in the log. I looked up who the manager is. 
I sent this, this person the information of the manager. He reached out to this person on LinkedIn. Guess what? He has a job interview next week. This is just a quick example of how it can quickly turn around just by utilizing the fact that this person I know I was friends with since college reached out to me and said to me that, hey, I'm interested in this job. Would you be able to connect me with the person that's reviewing the, my, the resumes and stuff like that? So that's exactly what I did. But the person took the initiative. That's where we have to focus on as a people. Now, I'm just I'm speaking as a generation. We have to now utilize relationship. We have to kind of step out of our comfort zone a lot of times. I've fallen victim to it. I'm sure Daniel has fallen victim to it. A lot of times we say to ourselves, eh, I don't know this person, so I, I, I'm not going to reach out to this person. Or, you know, I haven't spoken to this person since college or high school. I don't know if this person is really going to, you know, if I should reach out. Maybe this person may not necessarily want to help me. Or you just feel because of the fact you're like, hey, I, I don't want to, you know, the pride gets in the way a lot of times for us as individuals. We're like, ah, you know, I don't really want to be the person to kind of step out of my comfort zone to reach out to this person for this job. But remember, in you not doing that, that's taking the opportunity away from yourself. You're actually hindering yourself from doing that. What, what does it, does it hurt just to reach out and just send an email, send a message on LinkedIn? If the person doesn't respond, the person doesn't respond, but you can't say that you didn't try. That's where we have to get to. We have to actually try. That's one of the key components of relationship building is actually stepping out your comfort zone and understanding that, hey, me taking this leap of faith may be able to get me in this door or get me through the, this opportunity that I was looking for. Obviously, you have to have the skill set because obviously just because you know the person doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get the job. You still have to know your stuff end of the day. But at least if you do, if you feel like you have the qualifications, you have the expertise, take a leap of faith. It can only help you in the long run. So and you brought up yeah, some, really good, you brought some really great points there, Charles. And, you know, there's two of them I want to just expand on. The first one is the, you know, in, in, in relationship building, it's not who you know, necessarily. Most of the time, it's who you know, and who that person may know, right? So it's the third party that is outside of your field of vision, right? And to your point, as you mentioned, with the friend who wanted to get the interview, you knew the manager, right? He didn't know the manager. He doesn't know anyone in JP outside of you. Right. So direct contact to you allowed for indirect contact to the manager. And that's how that relationship circle kind of comes full circle, right? It's like you really, it, it, it's it's not necessarily the person, you know, like like the mutual friend that you know is just a stepping stone to someone else who really calls the shots, right? Now, the person who is the mutual friend may call the shots, right? I mean, it may be a VP or whatever the case is, right? Right, right? But there is still that other party that doesn't know you. And this is where the second part of it comes into play is the qualifications and skill set and the credibility. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the times, you know, it's the word of mouth. Yes, it gets your foot in the door. But also, it may be dependent on the type of individual that you know. So let's say, I'm just going to call a random company out, uh, Wells Fargo, right? You want to get a job at Wells Fargo and uh john is like the guy who works there now you may know how john is but you may not necessarily know 100 percent how his performance is at work but you want the job at as far so another thing to factor in is okay is this person good at their job is this person you know the type of individual who, you know, excels within the company and would be somebody that if they recommend me, will I actually get far? Or should I go to Susie, who also works at Wells Fargo? I don't, I don't know Susie like that, you know, but I remember from, let's say, college, she was, you know, just killing it or whatever the case is, right. but she doesn't know me. I don't really know her, but John is like my boy. You know, so should I ask John for the reference or should I ask Susie? And I think that's a very key thing to think about when it comes to, you know, leveraging these relationships to get your foot in the door. 
you know, it, and it's a, it's an important conversation to have with yourself. You can't have it with the people, right? You got to have it with yourself and kind of analyze like, okay, you know, who is really going to kind of like vouch for me, but also who has the, you know, the kind of credibility within the company I want to get into that will, once they make the recommendation, the manager will actually listen. Right. So those are the things that are like really key to think about because I mean, and ideally you'd have, you know, one in the same, right. A person who would vouch you, but they also do good work, but sometimes they don't always come in the same package. And that's something that's really key is just to think about that when you're looking at like companies that two people you may know work there. Right. Cause sometimes you may have to bite the bullet and say, well, you know, John's my boy. You know, he, he tells me some things like, I'm just like, oh, man, I don't know if he's like a hundred with it, you know? So it's just things to think about with that, you know? And I just wanted to highlight that. Cause I think though, cause I mean, my personal experience, I've had to make those kind of decisions when, you know, moving around in the corporate ladder, mm -hmm. you know, I've had to reach out to certain people that I wasn't, I didn't really know in order to get to where I am now. And that was like kind of the internal conversation I had to have. So, and it's worked out well, you know? Because at the end of the day, you know, the relationships that you make, you know, it's mutual, it's beneficial, you know, um, but also, you know, at the end of the day, it's, you know, you always have to ask yourself, you know, what are you getting out of this relationship in terms of where you want to move in life, you know, business wise, personal wise, whatever the case is. Right. And, you know, and like you said, the, it's a great point that you made, especially leveraging, like you said, the who kind of to reach out to, I think a lot of times too. That is something that, you know, we kind of juggle is like, okay, do I know that, you know, reach out to this person because I've known this person for X amount of years and know this person that I may not necessarily know in depth, but, you know, I know this person would be able to kind of point me more so in the right direction as opposed to this friend that I know. So these are all things to kind of highlight and kind of reference audience, you know, when you are in the process of relationship building through that type of uh, structure. I think another thing that I kind of want to also transition into is relationship building with your manager and or senior your management. I think a lot of time in the corporate workforce, we kind of are stagnant. And what I mean by stagnant in the sense of we don't necessarily know the right questions we want to ask to our managers and or senior management in terms of helping develop us as individuals in the workforce, whatever job that you're doing. Now, I may, I don't necessarily have all the right answers. And obviously, I'm sure Daniel doesn't as well. But one of the things I want to highlight from my side, and obviously I'll bring Daniel into it as well, audience, is kind of just taking the leap of faith. These, this is what I'm going to keep saying throughout this episode, is taking the leap of faith. A lot of times your manager wants you to reach out and they want to mentor you, but they're not going to always tell you that. And a lot of times they don't tell you that because at the end of the day, they're there to do a job just like you are. So at the end of the day, they don't really know what your career aspirations are. They don't know what you're willing to kind of get while you're working under this person or with this person for X amount of years that you're going to be here. So that's ultimately up to you. Now, one of the key components I would, I would want to highlight is one-on-one -on -one meetings. A lot of people that we work in a nine-to-five job, we have other team meetings or one-on-one -on -one individual meetings with our manager or senior management. These, this is where the question of your career development usually co should come into effect in relationship building, as opposed to you telling your manager just, and this is advice I'm taking for myself recently is instead of just asking your manager or telling your manager, you know, what can you do relative to the nine to five work you do, ask the question of how can I be more of an effective leader? That's one of the questions you could ask. What can I, what are the steps I can take? to get to, let's say you want to be a vice president and or a director, whatever the case, what steps can I take, or even an associate, what steps can I take to get to that level? You know, what, what, what can I improve on in the current work that I'm doing that can kind of highlight a little bit more of what I'm trying to do working under this team? These are just certain questions that you can ask. Now, obviously there's a plethora of questions out there that you can kind of put but these are questions that you want to highlight. It's also your town halls. I think it's important sometimes to attend your town halls. Not everybody's going to know what a town hall is. So what that is for us in, a nine of, in more of the banking corporate office, outside of that, town halls are just team, like basically department meetings and or 
or the whole corporation meeting. So this is when your specific department or some people, the whole corporation has a whole meeting where senior management, even your CEOs, your directors, they're actually addressing issues that are happening in your company, whatever company you're working at. But that's also very important because it also highlights when you have these one-on-one -on -one questions, where do you see your company going? Sometimes your company will tell you about bonuses that they're giving out during these town halls, but you may not even catch it because you didn't attend. These are all things you should be paying attention to, be cognizant of. If you're gonna make a move to grow, you also make sure you wanna make sure you're compensated thoroughly for that. That's also important in relationship building. A lot of times we take jobs because the title sounds nice, but it's pretty much the same job you're doing and or the same pay. So a lot of times it's important to understand also is if you are going to get a certain job, if you are looking to grow whatever, whatever field that you're in, that you're also, your ask is, is, more, is just as important as your why. So your ask is, you know, that's very important. What you're asking should correlate with why you're asking, because that's gonna ultimately align with what your manager and or director, whoever you're speaking to, will be able to answer for you. So let's say example, I come to Daniel, Daniel's my manager and I'm speaking to Daniel, I wanna be a vice president. Uh, whatever, it doesn't necessarily have to be in that department, whatever department that is. And if I'm asking that person, I'm going to also try to find out what the compensation is or what, how many years do I have to be senior to actually get into that role? These mm -hmm. are all questions that you also want to highlight as well. And obviously, Daniel, maybe you want to add, add on to what I'm saying, but these are kind of things you want to think about. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I wholeheartedly agree with establishing that relationship with your seniors, managers, directors, you know, those that are higher up in the corporate structure, because for two reasons, and I feel like two is a key number in this podcast. Um, <laughs> the first one is they were once a, an associate or, you know, an entry level um, employee, you know, they were in some way in your shoes, you know, um, from, from a corporate perspective. And to get to where they are now, they had to do certain things. You know, they had to have certain work habits. They had to establish certain relationships. So having that relationship and, and kind of that, you know, indirect mentor-mentee um, relationship is important because you'll be able to see what they did, right? Like, let's say, you know, you have a manager who, okay, in order for him to, for him to become manager, he had to, you know, work um, Saturdays. Let's say like once every month he had to work a Saturday, right? Now, if that is your goal, if that's your objective to become a manager, then you know what you have to do. Right. You know that what it, what is required in order to attain that level. Or if you want to be a senior, you ask a senior what they did. Mm -hmm. So it's it's all about, you know, listening to the people who have what you want in this scenario. And then the second reason, which, you know, kind of touched on, but I'll, I'll give it like a firm definition is, you know, when you establish these relationships with these, you know, higher level executives and things like that it's a relationship that can take you to other areas in your career that you may not have thought of. Let's say you wanna do a job, you know, rotation, right? You're in uh, banking and you want to switch into IT within the same company. You establishing a relationship with, you know, the banking director or whatever, he knows your work ethic, he knows you ask the right questions. And then one day you say, hey, I wanna move into IT. And he says, sure, I'll connect you with this guy and you guys, you know, have a conversation and then we can get some some things going. And then before you know it, you're in a completely different career path. There's no need to switch jobs. There's no need to, you know, I mean, if you want to, you could go back to school, but there's no need to really do all of that. All it really takes is a conversation with the right person to get you into the career path that you want to go to. And that is like, you know, personal story. That's what happened with me, right? I really wanted to direct my career into cybersecurity. And 
all it really took was conversations with the right people in order to get, you know, in order to move in that direction, right? As opposed to a lot of the alternatives. Now, don't be wrong. If you know, if, if the job is not the right job, then you make the appropriate decisions. But even in that case, the relationships that you have at that company could give you relationships in another company, right? So it all intertwines, right? It's all about how you kind of play the game, but you don't want to close off yourself from those relationships. And I know it could be uncomfortable to, you know, talk with your manager or your director, or, you know, you, it, it could be a little intimidating at times, but it's always good to just remember that, you know, there are people too, they have lives outside of work and they were once in your shoes as, you know, a, a, an employee, a first entry level employee, so wherever position you're at in the corporate structure, you know, whether you're, you know, first year um, associate entry level or you're a manager or even a director, shit, you could be a VP right now listening to this podcast, right? right, right. You know, wherever you see yourself going directionally career-wise, the person who's in that position, that's the person to talk to, right? And establish that relationship with. And now, ho however way you can, you know? And, and that's really the name of the game, you know, the importance of establishing the relationship, maintaining it and, you know, keeping it going forward, you know, even after you've gotten to where you need to be. It's always good to keep that relationship because, you know, it's, it's the, the benefits of having these relationships are key. And conversely, Charles, and I'll bring you in on this, you know, not having the right relationships or, you know, not taking those steps, you know, it could work against you in, in a lot of cases and, and, you know, in the corporate structure, because, you know, it's, it, it may not, see, and we talk about working in the virtual environment, it may not seem like it's important, mm -hmm. but if you're not visible, if you're just that person that, you know, you're just there, you do the job and then you leave, which I understand, believe me, I, I was, I was that, <laughs> I was like that a lot for, for, you know, good portion of my first few years. Mm -hmm. It, 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 it really doesn't help to move you up anywhere, right? Because you need to have a presence in whatever space that is, you know, because everyone has, everyone in a company has a certain, you know, image, has a certain go-to, right? Like, Charles is the go-to for tax. Daniel's the go-to for cyber, right? There's always that person who's the go-to. Right. And you, in order to be that go-to, you have to have that presence of the person who is like, oh, okay, he's he can assist me whenever, whenever he's the guy or she's the, the woman, or whatever the case is. Um, and you do that through that building, building those relationships. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> If you don't have that presence, if you don't build those relationships, you know, if, if, if you're just, you know, there, then, you know, it's, it's, it's really, it's terrible to say, but, you know, you, it's, it's not, it's not from a company perspective, it's not, it, you're, you're just like another employee, you're not like really standing out in the crowd, you know, and, and standing out, even though we're in a great job, um, you know, market right now, it's actually, you know, where there's more, um, what is it, uh, demand than supply right now for jobs. So, yes, yes. you know, you can, you can pretty much get a job wherever you just need to want to work. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, even though we're in a good space now, that could change at the drop of a hat, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, even, even with things being, you know, on the up and up, it's always good to still keep those fundamentals in mind. We want to stand out and to stand out building relationships is like pretty much the, one of the, not, I'm not going to say the easiest way because it's not really easy. It's not easy to talk to people like that, especially if you're not a talkative person or a social person, right. but it's, you know, it's the, the simplest way to get to where you want to be versus trying to do it all on your own, trying to, you know, and, and I, you know, it's encouraged to always look for certifications and there's a need to go back to school and do all of that. Yes. You know, but, you know, relationships are really like, you know, they, they can get you into places that you couldn't think that you could get to, you know, on your own with, without that, like person who just knows, you know, just knows the right key to open the door.
Right. And and Charles, I'll I'll get you in on this. You know this. <laughs> no, you 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 touched on some really great points, and like you said, kind of standing out is one of the key takeaways that I definitely recommend. Just kind of re re saying kind of what you said, Daniel. Is again, like you said, making yourself accessible. Um, that's the one thing I'll take away is, and what I mean by that is again, you being like he mentioned, a go to person, and that doesn't necessarily mean that you're handling every single program within your department, but it just means like your manager and or your team, they know like, hey, like Charles, Daniel, like he mentioned, this Charles is the guy for tax. Uh, Daniel's the guy for cyber security because at the end of the year, when your annual review comes, your manager and a lot of them are gonna look at it and be like, hey, you know, this is what's, you know, this, this is, these are what, these guys are kind of handling. This is what Charles has done throughout the year. He's built this thing up. Daniel has built this thing up. He, everybody was going to Daniel for this person. Everybody was going to Charles for this person. Cause that's very important because again, you being the point person for a lot of things that are happening is going to be key for you when it's time to speak for yourself. Because like I mentioned early in the podcast is like, okay, I want to get to this level, but where's your paper trail? What I mean by that is, what do you have to back this up to make yourself deserving of the role? Let's say you wanna be a, a manager. What, did, what steps did you take as an associate or analyst to wanna to make yourself a manager? Because remember, Daniel made a good point. A lot of these managers that we work under started where we are. They did something to get to be managers. They just didn't come into work and say, okay, I did my job, I'm going home, that's it. No, they had to take a little bit of a, of a little bit, do a little bit more, excuse me, maybe show up a little bit earlier. I'm taking more of that advice too. Little things like this, just because they don't always tell you doesn't necessarily mean they're not watching. You asking certain questions, all these things come into play when it comes to review time, when you want to get to that level, when you want to get to get to that salary range, whatever you want to do all these things come into play. So it's very important. These are all things to factor in in relationship building is having, having the right, uh, you know, the right relationships. Even, even if you don't like someone at work, just smile because end of the day, you never know. This person may be the asshole you don't like, but one day that person could be your manager. You never know. Things like this happen. I've seen it happen firsthand of people that, you know, I've seen somebody shit on this person but a couple of years later, that person they were shitting on ended up being that person's manager and they didn't have the best relationship. And I've seen things like this happen. Also, like he mentioned, being able to be a point person, even, even if something is out of your range, you, when I say out of your range, like it's not in your job description, but you have the knowledge and you have a little bit of the flexibility to do, take it on. Because what that showcases to management is, you know how to juggle different projects when things like, let's say if something happened at a drop of a hat, you know how to balance and you can handle that. That's part of being a manager is every day is going to be different. So how are you going to handle that pressure when that time comes? These are all things to factor in. And it's very important, like I mentioned, to build these relationships. You also have to understand that it, relationships take A and B to work, to come together. So you have to bring something and you want to get something from this person, vice versa, to bring that together. That's how you're going to excel in whatever, whatever field, whatever job you want to do, even starting a business, you want to learn from other people. If I wanted to start a, a stock investing business, I want to see how Warren Buffett did it. I want to, if I wanted to start a car company, I want to see how Elon Musk did it. The right and wrong. You, they don't necessarily have to know you. You necessarily don't have to speak to them. But the beautiful thing is we're on the internet now. We can look up the stories. How did this person do this? What? Elon Musk failed a couple of times before he actually got Tesla successful. Now, how did he get Tesla successful? Why did Tim Cook get, get fired or, or Steve Jobs get fired from Apple, excuse me, and, and then come back? What did he do? What, what did he build to get, to get into that, to the good graces of the shareholders? These are all things you have to think about. I know it sounds crazy. I sound like a madman right now, but trust me, these are all things you want to factor in because end of the day is, we all, have, we all should have a goal in life. We want to get to a certain point in life. Not everybody's going to be a CEO. Not everybody's going to be a manager. But 
you want to build, whether, like I mentioned, whether it's more salary, whether it's more flexibility in your job, let's say you're going to, you want to have kids one day, right? Hey, maybe if you become the senior guy that, or the senior woman that everybody goes to, what's your manager going to tell you when you're like, Hey, I got to take off to, to, to go to my kid's game early, this and that. Well, what are they going to tell you when you're the guy that's the main person or the main woman for that department? They can't tell you nothing because if they get rid of you, it's going to be hard to replace you. Yes, you can be replaced, but in relationship building, if you built the relationship, you've done what you had to do, it's going to be a lot harder for them to tell you no, trust me, down the line. So these are all key components, key factors that I want to highlight. Um, Daniel, I want to get your last thoughts. I think, I think we've given them pretty much the good blueprint of what exactly relationship building is. Yeah, and I, I just want to kind of, you know, hone in on the relationships that happen uh, outside of the corporate uh, workplace. And, uh, you know, and I'm talking these relationships that are, you know, you know, helps you in your personal life, whatever the case may be. Mention children. Let's say you are, you know, you have a good relationship with somebody in the company. They may have left and, you know, went to some other job, but you guys were cool. You know, they were probably a manager or somewhere, you know, whatever the case is. Mm -hmm. And they have connections to the school board that you're trying to get your kids enrolled in. And it's like a gifted program, whatever the case is, right? Mm -hmm. That relationship that you established within the workplace transfers outside of the workplace and into now a more personalized setting where it helps your personal life as well. So I, I also want to highlight the importance of, you know, the relationships that also happen kind of outside the workplace. I mean, they could start in the workplace, but they could also kind of branch out into different areas that will have, you know, a profound impact on your life, right? Because in the work setting, you know, it doesn't always have to be about work, right? Like it, it, it can be about other things because, you know, I mean, there's rare people who think about work 24 seven, you know, like it's, you know, outside of work, that's where a lot of like hobbies, ambitions and other things, that's where the, those things lie. So um, establishing a relationship and also to the point where, you know, maybe you could get insight into, you know, a little bit of, you know, not like pride, but just like a little bit of, you know, what they do outside of work, right? Like, you know, I've had managers who I've established relationships with and I've discovered, you know, I found out that they were um, renovating, you know, their homes and building, you know, bathrooms from the ground up and stuff. And I ask, oh, so, you know, what's the, because I'm interested in that and that's something I've been doing. If anyone follows me, you know, I'm always doing something with yeah man I, I love it i always check out your stories to see i'm like man what's it gonna build today like i'm excited yeah oh you know if it's something like that you could yeah. you know pick something that's um you know there, there's a mutual interest in and that can take you you know wherever right like if in my case if i'm looking for a good contractor that can ask my manager hey you know, a guy who does, you know, roofs or backyards or whatever case is like, you could talk to this guy, boom, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. Right. If it's, you know, you're trying to, I don't know, get, get fit or, you know, get, reach a certain um, physique and your manager or your uh, coworker knows a great, uh, you know, a great gym guy, great, um, you know, great program, a great trainer who can get you in you know, and maybe they can finesse a price because, you know, there's that relationship there. So it's, it's always important to see, see beyond, you know, what's just in the, in the office setting, right? Like, because as I've mentioned before, these, you know, the people that you work with are people, like they have life outside of work, you know, it's not just work, 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 work for them. It may seem like that because they're, manager director it, it may seem like that's like you know their life but in reality it's not you know it's it's very there it there's not much difference between an employee and uh, a director outside of just the level of workload and the the amount of relationships that have been established right and time and you know these are the things that you know when you look outside of that and just see what else they're into you know 
it could, you just never know what could happen. Charles, you mentioned a business. You could have a coworker who is, you know, they may have something that they do on the side mm -hmm. and it aligns with the type of business you're trying to do. Example, you may have a photography business and your coworker may just work with models on the side and he gets you or she, he or she gets you a gig and you can establish a portfolio at, you know, the next whatever, whatever they call it, you know, some, some right. Hollywood thing, you know, like right. it, it's, it's, you just never know. Right. I mean, I know I'm, I'm talking, but it's like, this is real yeah, stuff. I've seen points, it yeah. You know, I've, I've seen it happen where these relationships, they start at the workplace and then it just, it, it develops into, you know, two people are working together in a business. Right. Mm -hmm. I've seen that happen. I've seen, you know, different, just, just, just different connections being created from just that initial step of stepping outside the comfort zone, building the relationship, seeing where it goes. Right. Because at the end of the day, I mean, you know, it's not just about the, you know, agenda that you have, right? right. You generally want to, you know, just at the end of the day, get to know the people that you work with right. and just see what kind of pulls you in right and you're not going to get along with everybody and we're not sitting here telling you hey be cool with everybody because not everybody is cool right, right. some right. people are jerks <laughs> you know and you want nothing to do with them and that's mm -hmm. fine mm -hmm. right um but they still can provide some lesson to you right like even someone's management style you may not like that relationship and you could say cool to yourself cool i don't like that management style and that's not the type of manager i want to be mm -hmm. i want to be this right so even with that contrast relationship there's always you could always take away something from it. you know relationship building i think we learned that even as kids growing up like we don't like certain people and we don't want to associate with certain people because of just how they make us feel and that is carried into the workplace as well with management styles uh work ethic all of those things right it all plays a part so you know say all in this to say like, yeah, Charles, to, to my final thoughts on it. Um, you know, you know, don't, don't allow your, don't, don't hinder the, the opportunity that comes with, um, just knowing people, you know, cause you don't know who the right person is until they reveal themselves as the right person, right? Like you don't know, like, I don't know Charles is going to be the guy to get me, you know, in the in the room with the right people until I start talking to Charles mm -hmm. and finding out what he's into, right? So, you know, like the old saying, don't judge a book by its cover until you open the book and see the pages. Right. That's 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 really what it is with this relationship building stuff. And it's very fundamental and it sounds very simple, but it's it's not you know we all really you know it's it's a work in progress i work on it you know every day trying to just you know speak to you know whoever and just you know see see what comes of the relationship maybe nothing comes of it and that's fine right. you know it's all it's all about building that network building that you know relationships that uh that you can carry with you through your career and through your personal life too so what are my final thoughts on it? No, and, and Daniel makes some great points, audience. You know, it, it, it's very key, like he said, to, you know, and you don't know. You don't know who who you're working with, who, you know, you're working under or working above, whatever the case is, that can put you in the right doors. And maybe it may not be a year from now, maybe two years from now, but down the line. You never know. Who's to say that? A lot of my coworkers don't know maybe I have a business. They don't know maybe one day I may have a Fortune 500 company. You never know. But that's it's key that you build these relationships early on and you maintain these relationships. Now, obviously, we all have our own lives. I'm not saying you have to text the person every single day and call the person. That's not what it means. It just means like, you know, if you're going to establish a relationship and maybe even that person put you in the door, you always remember to follow up with the person, always show appreciation. I think a part of relationship building is being humble, being, you want to be assertive, yes, but you also want to be humble. And the humbleness comes from understanding that, yes, this person or this individual can put me where I need to be, but I'm always appreciative. And I also just don't forget the person once I get to wherever I need to be. Because a lot of times 
what we forget is in relationship building is once we get the knowledge, it's also important to pass it over, pass it down, or pass it to whoever. Now, again, that doesn't necessarily mean you need to mentor somebody, but sometimes that information you give out, let me give you an example. Warren Buffett every year has his annual shareholders meeting. Now, this is information that you don't necessarily have to be a shareholder of Berkshire, but you, you, he allows you, if you own even one stock, to attend these shareholder meetings. And I've heard people that even I follow online, I don't even know personally, saying that that couple of hours that they're in that room with Warren Buffett, they've learned more about investing than they've learned from any type of class they've taken, any type of YouTube channel they listen to, et cetera, et cetera. That's part of knowledge building. That's relationship building. Warren Buffett doesn't, he probably won't know anyone in that room, but what he's saying is, thank you for growing my stock. Thank you for making me richer. Now I'm going to pass down the information of how the company is doing and how you can make yourself even more money for yourself. That's relationship building. Let me give you an example. Steve Ballmer is one of the richest owners and, and when I, not even sports owners in the world. This is the same guy that was, that was across the hall from a person named Bill Gates when they attended Harvard. And when Bill Gates was building this company, Steve, Steve Ballmer took the initiative to reach out and say, hey, what are you building? And when Bill Gates kind of gave that information over time, that, that, that uh, camaraderie was built. And eventually, Bill Gates said when he left Harvard, he brought him along. There's so many other stories like that, that a lot of people don't even realize. A lot of the companies that we literally shop at daily, we go to daily, they started with relationship building by knowing someone, whether you were in school with this person, whether you were at a job with this person, whether you didn't even know this person, this person just connected with you through a conference, whatever the case, they started building that relationship. Relationships are endless. They're timeless. You can build relationships with anybody. Establish your relationship. If you fell out with somebody and you're like, hey, I fell out with this person, and I would like to reconnect, just reach out. The worst thing a person can say is no, but you never know. You don't know until you take a leap of faith. That's what I wanna to give to you guys for this episode, myself and Daniel as well, is what are you doing today? What relationships are you building today that can cultivate or help you grow for tomorrow? That's very important to understand. Thank you, guys. I want to thank you, those, for tuning in to this episode. This is episode 63 of the Danso Pitch. Again, my name is Charles Danso, joined by my good friend, my co-host, my business partner, Mr. Daniel Goodman. Thank you so much. I hope to see you guys in the next episode. Peace. Peace, y'all. Oh, shit. Dude. Dude. Oh. Oh. Hold on, Daniel. I think it stopped, but... It's, it's, it's going to respond. I just, I put it in by accident. Sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah. But as long as we, as long as we record it. No, no, it, it, it'll record. Once I stop it, it'll, it'll stop because it's already recording. So hold on. Yeah. Hit.